Hey. Check, check. Can everyone... Hey. Hey, oh. Put your hands up in the air. Put your hands up in the air. That's the spirit. Okay. So, hey, everyone. I'm uh, really glad to be here. And uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be here on uh, uh, the stage of WordCamp Europe. Um, I'm really grateful to any and every one of you who's here in this room. Uh, I know that uh, we didn't quite get far too many uh, seats here, so I know that some people are waiting outside, so really, um, you know, the first in, first out strategy works out pretty great here. All developers are uh, pretty, um, <clears throat> you know, satisfied that the algorithms that they studied at high school actually worked. So, uh, so far, so good. Um, I'm also really excited to talk about managing a remote WordPress team, or what I've been doing for the past uh, probably nine years, even before I started uh, Devrix. And uh, uh, if you haven't attended the talks before mine here at this room, the one for email management, the one for business strategy and product business, and the one for project management afterwards, please go on WordPress TV after their live and uh, take a look at them. They're really well combined in the whole um, you know, business topic track. Uh, that's uh, entailing the entire strategy for building and running a business, building a business model and everything like that. I'm going to touch on some of those today, but uh, you know, my uh, main focus would be managing a remote WordPress team. A few words about me. I'm the CEO, the founding dude, and the WordPress architect at uh, Devrix, which is a distributed agency. Uh, I used to do a lot of coding before. I'm Java certified, have a lot of uh, other useless certificates for security and for marketing and whatnot. Um, I'm the main guy who's dealing with uh, software as a service solutions and migrations in our team, because that's kind of our main specialty. Um, at some point of time, I had to get into marketing and project management. I know that some of you guys have started with that and kind of entered the WordPress industry. I was the code geek dealing with uh, telecoms and banks and large enterprise um, pleasant things at work before I actually had to enter into that industry. Um, I'm no fearing with underscores in between on Twitter, so if you want to tweet some uh, crazy stuff I talk about, feel free. Um, my boss wouldn't mind it. He's uh, busy giving a talk right now. Um, and I'm really passionate about open source and working from uh, coffee shops. Um, not like the Dutch ones, but you know, like the ones with Starbucks and Costa and stuff like that. Um, about uh, our team, what we do mostly is we do uh, retainers, ongoing work, you know, it's recurring revenue, we get money month by month, which is pretty awesome, it makes it more predictable, which is one of the uh, main benefits of our business plans. We do a lot of software as a service work and migrations, platform development, API integrations, We've worked with uh, clients from the automotive, airline industries, and whatnot. It's pretty fun, uh, banks and telecoms and whatnot. We have three WordPress core contributors on the team. I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, and six uh, you know, community contributors, um, WordPress TV moderators, team reviewers, and other folks who are pretty uh, embedded and involved in the WordPress community, for those of you who don't know. All those batch of, over there are from uh, folks on our team. Woo um, so anyway, um, I'd like to, to start with something Blinking? It isn't blinking here. Can it stop blinking? Yeah. No? Anyway, that's probably a disco effect over there. Uh, let me try one more time. So anyway, it's remote for you. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to give you a short story. Obviously, remote is not a sustainable business model uh, for some of those industries. And that blinking is not a heartbeat, or at least I hope so. Uh, so it's obviously not sustainable for any of those industries out there. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that you don't really want to get a doctor who's doing a heart surgery remote. But, um, in fact, what I actually learned on my uh, way back from WordCamp uh, Boston, I think, last year, I met a guy, the guy's name was Guy, uh, who, was actually working in a <laughs> who was actually working in one of those laboratories, and he was giving a training on um, performing remote surgeries, you know? And actually, it turned out that it's quite possible to use uh, very specific uh, fine-tuned 3D cameras only for the medical industry that they uh, actually uh, provide, uh, provide the opportunity for doctors to um, operate remotely so that, you know, if there are very important and sensitive uh, operations in different, on different continents, in different countries, they can just sit down in one of those laboratories and spend an hour for each operation without having to spend several days traveling back and forth. So it's, it's something very innovative. I would have used some photos, but they're very explicit. So that's why I kind of skipped on that. But it's actually working. And um, you know, the, the, the short version, the gist of it is that if someone can perform a heart surgery remotely, you have zero excuse not to do 100% online business as a distributed business. Like zero. 
That, that's the gist of it, you know? But anyway, so uh, if you have decided to, or if you've started, like Taco already asked how many of you are business owners. I know that some of you run small agencies or large agencies or big companies, uh, like on-site or remotely. If you have decided to do a remote business, there are several things that are managerial that are a bit more important than if you run an offline business. But uh, the short version is that you need to adhere to several different rules. There's some async, I see something. Okay, cool. Uh, so there's the, the business plan that you need to figure out. Very, it's very important because you know having a formal business plan is more important with a remote theme because you can discuss all the fun stuff at the office or you know while having a drinks after business hours. A lot of remote people don't really understand what you're after, what your targets are, and how you envision the steps to get there. You know, that's kind of the difference between having uh, some folks at the office, they know, you know how you, um, what you do on a daily basis, they know uh, what you're busy with, how you spend your time, what are your main goals, you can have all those uh, water cooler cheat chats here and there, but it's something that remote workers don't really get, and uh, that's why you need to spend more time actually focusing on your business plan and business strategy in order to, uh, to allow for remote people to join your company if they're not there, or to ensure the satisfaction of the current people working there. So if we have to, to nail this down in a certain way, that's fun. Uh, we, we can identify several different uh, vectors that we need to focus on. So first off, we need to identify the business direction, which is basically that plan that we're talking about. Uh, Matt had a talk about um, you know, building a product business and business plans, so he covered that in details. And then, again, if you haven't seen the talk, please watch on WordPress uh, TV later on. Then you need to identify the key roles. Like when you have the business plan, whether you're like a service agency, a product business, whether you're going to provide you know, migrations or uh, small business websites, whether you're taking a vertical, everything needs to be written down. Everything needs to be planned for the next six months, for the next 18 months, for the next three years, so that you have a pretty, pretty valid strategy as to what is any of you going to do uh, for the time being. So having said that, you need to remember that slide because they're blinking so fast. It's probably the 25th you know, thing happening in TV. Uh, so you need to identify those uh, these key roles and identify the people who are going to work on that accordingly and what are the key positions that you want to hire for because that's also something that's fairly important. You need to know what kind of positions you need to hire and what not. Then, uh, when you know what you need to hire, for example, whether it's a PHP developer or a JavaScript developer or a marketing assistant or a marketing guy, whatever, you know what kind of skills they have to have in order to work for your company, but what you don't know is what are the remote qualities of that particular person that we're going to cover. Then we need to do the interviewing and the hiring and get into some issues that you may get uh, in that process. Uh, how to uh, ensure the employee retention or how to make sure that folks are staying with your company for as long as possible. Uh, then we have the growing thing that's somewhere here. Come on, show here. There we go. The growing thing, uh, working with tools and uh, doing the agile uh, model that at least our company is focusing on. So. The, the main thing about the business idea is um, related to the values and mission. Can anyone behind make sure that this isn't happening because it doesn't seem like something is happening here? Uh, but uh, either way, like once we identify the business goals and uh, whatnot, we need to make sure that everyone agrees with the business targets, with the company goals and the values. Or what I'm saying is that the most important thing, like um, Technical skills or whatever skills people use on a daily basis as something they've studied at the university are usually the least important thing at work. The most important thing is that, uh, is that everyone is adhering to the company goals and values. Or in other words, that everyone uh, ha is focusing on the same strategy, everyone knows what's important for the company. When something happens, everyone knows what to focus on. Like, we are going to ignore all of those minor details so that we can focus on the major, on the most important thing, on the main goal that the company is focusing on. That's also important for interviewing later on. Uh, when we're talking about leaderships, it's super important uh, that they represent you best. Why? Because at some point when you're getting to 30, 40, 50, 60, 80 people, uh, you are going to have to find folks that support 100% your methods, right? Uh, because you won't be able to talk with every single person in your company at every single point of time. And you may uh, miss important folks in your business. And also poisonous people can very easily kill your business. So make sure that you don't hire them, don't get them involved in a, a single environment where they can harm your business, like your clients, or uh, you know, insult other people in your team and whatnot. 
Um, when you're building a team member profile, like I said, the qualities of a remote person are a bit different than the ones of uh, you know, a person on, on site. Uh, your remote employees should be accountable, which we're going to see in a moment. Uh, other than that, they should be a team player unless they're working on something that's really unique. I'm going to change that again. Uh, they need to be self-driven and motivated. Like, motivation is one of the key things that are missing for non-remote people. Like, if you can hang out with people and play football or something else at the office or having beers, remote people often don't know that and they feel like isolated, away from the office or away from the, you know, core leadership or whatnot. So they, have, they need to be more motivated. Uh, also, the remote person should learn fast and know how to find solutions to problems because you can just sit behind their back and say, yeah, you can Google this and you can do this and move that and move this and move that. So that's, again, an important quality for them. They need to take ownership of a product or a problem, not being taskers, but actually understand, the, again, the key vision, the key goals, goals for a business in order to be able to implement them as they're the decision makers of that particular thing, which means that you need to give them freedom. They need to wear multiple hats because it's really important to be uh, you know, switching between different environments here and there. And like I said a bit earlier, skills are often not the most important part. You know, communication, team spirit, being motivated, uh, being able to take responsibility, being accountable are far more important for a remote person and skills can be taught at work, trust me. Uh, Wade Foster from Zapier, a famous service that allows for uh, integrating different APIs here and there, uh, wrote in uh, 21 months in How to Manage a Remote Team uh, a few specific tips that I'd also like to share with you. What he says is hire doers, you know, not people just slacking and waiting for the end of the business day, but doers. Hire people you can trust, especially with remote people, that's really important. Trust the people you hire, obviously. Hire people who can write, because when you work remotely, a lot of the work is actually happening within a project management systems or other tools that require a lot of writing. For example, we have a, a minimum um, uh, words per minute speed that we accept just because sometimes it takes like five minutes to write a sentence, which is simply not acceptable when you work remotely. Uh, and hire people who uh, are okay without a social workplace. There are some extrovert people who think that they can work from home and they just can't and they kind of break down unless they join a co-working space or a shared office or something like that. So all those things are really important. Again, it's not about skills. It's about interpersonal skills. It's about social skills. It's about not the technical or whatever professional skills uh, you would be looking for in the first place. Uh, there is a specific model that was supplied, I think, in Best Buy in the States. It's called uh, ROWE, Remo uh, Results Only Working Environment. So the results only working environment differs by te telework with two different criteria. People can, you know, leave or join, uh, go online at the office or whatever at any time as they see fit, unlike requiring a permission to take a day off or working from home or whatever. But the most important part is that with the result only working environment model, efficiency is the thing that's being rewarded and not the face time. So, one of the best strategies for a remote business model, or something that uh, I would strongly advise you do whenever possible, is to focus on efficiency and results instead of face time. You know, when you have several people working on uh, a similar complexity of tasks, see who's doing the best and give them some freedom. Tell them that they can uh, embrace their creativity, they can, you know, focus on their energy, and as long as they're hitting their results and they're happy, they can get some free time off, they can, you know, start later or whatever. So, again, it's not about face time, it's not about specific business hours, uh, it's all about efficiency. Of course, there are certain exceptions, you know, if you're doing support or if you're doing, I don't know, client calls or something like that, then you need to be around at certain times. But other than that, there is a specific type of work that needs to be done. And if you allow developers, designers, marketing people, it, each one of them is a, is a creative person, you know? Even development is a very creative skill. And it requires a certain attitude, it requires a certain uh, you know, amount of sleep, a certain motivation so that people can do their work uh, at their best level. So, uh, efficiency reward is one of the things I'd really strongly suggest you to do. And also read about the results only working environment. So, uh, regarding hiring and job interviews and whatnot, uh, the, the, the job description should be detailed and descriptive and focus again on those interpersonal skills or uh, skills that are important for a remote worker, like communication, responsibility, logical thinking and whatnot. Uh, you can do trial projects and trial milestones. It's a bit safer than having someone at the office. Uh, the guys at Modern Tribe actually suggest uh, hire slow, fire fast. If I'm not mistaken, I think that Shane said that. I'd say hire fast for trial projects and fire fast. 
You know, give everyone a chance, make sure that you have trial projects that are safe enough, you know, not sharing customer data accounts or whatnot, just working on internal projects on products or something else. Give everyone a chance and measure communication, uh, responsibility, uh, self-driven management and things like that. Because sometimes people are doers, they're motivated, they're, uh, you know, high performance, as Chris Lemma says, uh, and those are the kind of people you want to work with, even though they don't look awesome on the portfolio. Set expectations and measure everything. Like, everything needs to be measured, especially with remote people. You know, pro productivity, uh, code quality, uh, like everything that you can measure, if it's for technical people, for marketing people, sales people, whatever. At Derex, we only hire 2% uh, of the people. They're just there are just too many people who really don't fit that remote working model and they're just not a good fit uh, for a remote person, even if they're perfect for staying at the office. So once you have all of that, you need to put your team to work. Uh, what, uh, what you can do is embrace the agile model and do a, mon a Monday kickoff meeting so that everyone on the team can start. You can do them online. For example, we use Asana for building the sprints and we use HipChat for communication. And we make sure that if someone is in a time zone that's really impossible to attend the meeting, everything has a written log. And everyone has a weekly sprint of tasks to work on. And you know, basically everything has been prepared up front. That's why we do the weekly sprints. We do the weekly reviews at the end of the week just to make sure that there are no delayed tasks. Uh, you know, the project management has, doesn't have to contact the client for certain delays or whatnot. Uh, we keep track on each one's progress because, because we work as a team and sometimes we have interdependencies. Uh, it's easy to direct and navigate in daily stand-ups. If you use, for example, uh, HipChat, I'm pretty sure that Slack has that, you can just leave a stand-up message at the beginning of the day without having to schedule a specific uh, time uh, for everyone to meet at the same time. And also, we can track availability and report immediately to clients. Just because everything is written in our project management system, we have the sprints, it's easy to export all the tasks, see what's done, what's not, and when. Like, like we said, we can track everything. Tools are super paramount, so use all the tools and services that you can. We use, those are some of the things that we use on, kind of on, on a daily basis uh, for different kinds of scenarios. We try to automate as many things as possible, uh, and this makes the life pretty easier so that we have less things uh, to think about on a daily basis. All sorts of automation, build scripts, standardization. If you're doing migrations, if you're doing automated testing, if you're doing, I don't know, uptime monitoring, if you're doing backups, there are tons of tools that can help you do, uh, deal with that. You can use you know, GitHub, obviously, for uh, the version control uh, for your code. You can do uh, you know, Travis for continuous integration. You can do everything that you do on a daily basis, everything that you do more than two times or three times, you can automate with that kind of tools. Uh, what we do, like again, you can do that with Slack, we do that with HipChat, we flow everything into HipChat, commits, tasks, and whatnot. And then having all of our tasks on Asana, everything being built as a task by task by sprints, allocated to all people, we can get the work estimates, we can convert them to reports, we can make reviews of those reports in order to make sure who's dealing fine, who's being slow for some reason, and communicate with them accordingly with different project management strategies, and generate invoices for our clients accordingly. Uh, about bonding and scaling, regarding the growing, I really thought that I can build a horizontal uh, you know, working environment at some point of time. It turned out that it's impossible, at least for me. I find it really hard, and that's why it's easier to work with smaller teams that work on projects. Because especially as you grow distributed and hire all across the world in different continents, you need to adhere to time zones, you need to make sure that communication is streamlined. The fewer people work on a project, the easier communication is. So this requires some sort of hierarchy, and the vertical one is a bit easier, especially when you can involve people who specialize in personal skills, like project managers or business operator assistants, and other people who can actually work with your team. For employer retention, we do on-site, uh, you know, beer drinking and hookah smoking, as Taku said. Uh, we use HipChat, and we have off-topic and chill chat channels where we share stuff like that. You know, just, uh, just enjoying and sharing the fun stuff that we saw at work with all of our remote team members. We try to, you know, follow social media accounts and things like that just to share different uh, wins that they had, like if they won a tournament or if they graduated for the university and things like that and share it with the whole team so that we can feel like a team working at the same office. And something that I personally do is I'm listing uh, the top three life priorities of everyone so that e for each one of my team members, I know what are their top three life priorities and that's what I'm trying to accomplish for each one of them. So even even if there's something, you know, over time or something else happening at work, I know the top three priorities, making sure that they're satisfied so that they can handle on some extra work whenever needed. Anyway, that's an ongoing and repetitive journey. I'm a bit behind on schedule. Dry and kiss all the time. I'm not sure what you're thinking about, but I'm going to explain it. Uh, it's don't repeat yourself and keep it simple, you know, dude. 
uh, all the time. Make it easier for new people by processizing everything. You know, just building processes, as uh, Matt said earlier. Make it predictable and less disappointing when in trouble. Focus on growing your business. Um, additionally, read more about the interruption science, which is something that's coming up as a slide in a moment. Uh, interruption science is the science of how different interruptions at the office or even remotely affect your team members. It's really an important study for disruptions, so try to make it as uh, easily as possible, as planned as possible, with as fewer, uh, hey, what's going on, happening on a daily basis as possible. Communication, the most important part. Strive for crisp communication. It improves the project management, improves the planning, uh, reduces surprises, prevents drama, delays, and mistakes immediately. Like, really, communication is probably the most important thing you need to find for a remote person. Strengthens the team spirits, you know, with less internal office drama, and complete transparency. What I'd uh, suggest is whoever is the founder or, the, like, the main manager, everyone needs to have direct access to him or her. Like, it, it just needs to happen, so that if someone feels threatened or uh, suppressed by another manager, they can go to the, decision, the main decision maker in the company. For learning and improving, go to community events, contribute to WordPress, take certain courses that can improve your skills and knowledge, and uh, you learn more about other industries, do code reviews and peer programming, explore other fields, uh, try to learn new things every week. Even if it's not about your specific niche, could be like a new function, could be like a new way to communicate with clients and other people. Uh, try new tools and uh, always try to challenge the process at uh, every single point of time. So, uh, someone who I believe everyone knows here, even though the slide isn't visible. So, that's a quote from Matt Mullenweg. We focus on two things when hiring. First, we find the best people you can in the world, and second, let them do their work. Just get out of their way. When you do remote working, you don't have to adhere to the same office space at the same time. Find the best people, hire them, let them do their work. That's pretty much an advice that I'd like to reshare through Matt. Um, so uh, that's pretty much everything for me. So thanks, everyone. Um,